Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, it's your boy Pack Row, aka Perez, y'all from the Rumble Room. Um, and for those who do not know me from the Rumble Room, this is PJ Lee. This is Lee. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> just wanted to uh, give my current thoughts on the situation regarding coronavirus. Um, mainly, what's being heard. What's being heard in the news, <clears throat> in your mainstream news, when I say mainstream news, I'm talking about the CNNs, the NBCs, the Fox News, um, I'm talking about uh, CNBCs, maybe the C-SPANs, um, everything you see on TV, okay, um, and how they are shaping a narrative um, that doesn't quite reflect uh, reality. Um, and just to start off, the reason I say this is because, <clears throat> I mean, those, those who, who have a critical mind, you know, you know what these news sources are there for. These news sources are there to, uh, they're there to protect corporate interests. They're there to protect corporate interests. So, the establishment, the capitalistic establishment, the bureaucracy, they're here to protect their friends, all the investors, all the rich people that pay big money so that they can continue to do the things that they do, continue to cheat us, and they pay the news in order to, to, to accomplish those ends. So when you're listening, uh, Nathan Tyler says, do you think it's bigger than what than what some media is saying? Uh, to answer your question quickly, uh, yes, I do. And I'm going to go into it right now. So when you're, wa when you're watching, understand, okay, understand that when you're watching CNN, when you're watching NBC, when you're watching Fox News, you're seeing a very refined product that is refined in such a way that that's not that it's not to the interest of. Uh, the best interest for your f necessarily for your future, and I say necessarily because if your ends aren't consistent with the with those rich people, if you're not benefiting from from the same things that the rich people that are paying these news sources to not talk about certain issues, to talk about certain issues, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go in in in, in on that too, uh, Nathan, because this ties into into the Bible. But I have I have lots of friends, and they come, they come from lots of different walks of life. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with the Matrix stuff first, just as a head heads up for everybody, and then and then for those who, I mean, because because many lots of people know how how I get down. Um, I've been this way for a while. Um, and they know I don't I don't dilly dally and have steak and eggs in the matrix. Um, they know me. A lot of these people, they you know, some some people, like even even my own family, they'll they'll they'll, they'll sort of give me the uh, you know, you know, show me in one way or another that, that they get un you know, the people that get uncomfortable when we talk about these types of issues that that people who are comfortable with the system, with the status quo, with the quote unquote matrix, they don't want to be bothered because their 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 artificial reality has is comfortable. But the, but the truth is, there are some things that begin to show how artificial um, our th this this society and this world is, how it's sculpted and, and carefully crafted. And when when you start to talk about those things, people don't want to hear it. Because they have jobs, they have livelihoods, they have families, and they just don't want to be bothered by troubling information. But people know how, how that I don't get down like that. People know, and people know that I'm not that I'm not some kook. You know, I, ha I have a master's. I, I'm a twice credential educator. People know that I'm being harassed by the FBI. So, so basically, by me saying that, maybe it's cause to maybe consider it a little bit. I would, I would, I would, I would implore people or not implore i guess beseech or, or say you know consider consider these things that i'm going to 
if if you can stomach it. But so I'll start off with this with the stuff that's that's um not as heavy and and then and then I'll give the forewarning for people to hit the exit door and then I'll go into the, I'll go into the deep stuff. Um because it all ties together. This is this is the most high's doing. We know that in Esdras and, and in the Bible, he warned us that he would do these things. He would do these things. You know, your average Christian, your average Christian pastor is, is going to, you know, they think that 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 Hasatan, they think that the adversary, they think that these wicked men aren't, you know, they aren't connected to the Most High's ordination. The Most High ordains these things. The Most High, when you go to church and you sit in those pews, you're going to be disconnected. You're going to, there's going to be a disconnect between the, the fact that Elohim causes these mischiefs and this calamity and the, and this, and this, basically this evil that happens in the world. I mean, that, that's a very sensitive discussion. The causality, right? It, the most high is the first cause of everything. Everything has come forth from him. So there is nothing in this world that hasn't come forth from him. He is the first cause. So everything that happens, he, you can tie causality to him. Because if it, if it happened independent of his, of his ordination, he wouldn't be the omniscient, omnipotent Elohim that we believe him to be. So to take a few steps back and to rewind, um, <clears throat> um, let's deal with some of this uh, coronavirus commentary. Um, <clears throat> so we know, so we established that the news sources are, are are they 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 work in the interests of in corporate interests. Okay, if you're not rich, if you're not rich, you're gonna get screwed. The, the poor people, people who have been living in the struggle and poverty. They've been knowing this, but they don't have a voice. But now it's coming to a point where Elohim, he's causing people to be honest with themselves. You're going to have to be honest with themselves. So I just listened to uh, Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York. OK, and I, and I really have to like, like be careful to take my time and like breathe because like it, it, like I have a lot of information, um, you know, to, to offer. But there's a there's a balance because you can become so informational that you don't speak. You sound like a robot. You know, a person can, you know, and I don't want to sound like a robot. You know, I don't want to I, I want everybody to understand the urgency in this. But I don't want to be so passionate that I lose that I lose my place where I'm trying to. Uh, all the information that I'm trying to. Um, to, to, to lay out. <clears throat> um, so. Um, Andrew Andrew Cuomo, uh, be, after he gave a um, advertisement for some new hand sanitizer, okay, he went into um, he went into a lot of things. But one of the salient points he was trying to communicate was that we shouldn't be upset, okay, and we shouldn't be we shouldn't panic. OK, now it that depends on how you define panic, you know, like these people who are who are in charge, who are in who are in power. Panic could could mean asking questions. Panic is people going out, you know, to them panic. They, then they came up with a with a term for it just in a matter of days. They came up with the term for it. Panic buying. Okay. These pe people who are being practical and forward thinking and saying, hey, you know what? The economy is going to dry up pretty soon. Our product uh, supply is going to run out. Let me go grab the necessities, toilet, paper, water, and soap as much as I can so that I will be better off in the future. And what has what have the news what has the news done? You see you, you hear the term panic buying. And then you, you you see all the videos of people fighting in the stores. 
Um, let's take a let's take a a, a wider let's take a, a a broader perspective. Let's step back a little bit and talk about preppers. Okay, there has been a demonization of preppers in the past at least decade, at least six years. And I want to say at least two thousand eleven, two thousand thirteen. This is when the videos, I think, I, well, at, least, at least I remember the videos starting to surface of people preparing. And they were demonized. Oh, these tinfoil hat individuals who are foreseeing some crisis that, you know. And, and guess what? All those people who prepped, who stocked on water, who, who, um, who have defied government legislation. We're going to go into this in a little bit. Government, government legislation on collecting water, collecting rainwater. Did you know that's illegal? Did you know, did you know collecting rainwater is illegal? Um, these people who, who developed, who are knowledgeable in, in, in engineering, who um, can create the, uh, um, sort of these grassroots um, systems, they like MacGyver, <laughs> okay, they, they take materials and they create from their home and they create systems of, of self, self-sustenance, self meaning um, water systems, water filtration systems, um, all the people who are gardening, um, who know this, who know the, the wonderful ways of gardening with, um, by using, uh, resources very, um, very prudently, very wisely. The government will target these people. They will target these people. They have targeted these people and they go after these people and they, they break apart their, their, all these systems that they've created. But why? And, wh- and why would a government do that, you ask? Why, why would they do that? Because you have what are called utility companies who, if they don't have people using their utilities, if these, if these, these individuals who have developed these systems, develop their system, they're allowed, they're allowed to persist off that system over time. Then can you imagine their neighbor coming over and say, hey, neighbor, what, what do you got there? Well, it's a water filtration system and it uses and it recycles water and it does this and that. And, 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 and I save a ton on, my, on utility bill. I had virtually have none. So then it becomes a class. All the neighbors, all the people in the community come to this one neighbor and they say, wow, teach us about this, this, utility, this utility system. I'm going to go into something called uh, the 100th monkey effect. It's a psychological... Uh, I do my best, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff I, I learned in college and it's just coming to mind and you don't think of it until like you start to think of these things and it's like, hey, you know, things ring bell. I'll try to communicate the best as I can. But um, um, so so you have these, the neighbors now they want to know. Then 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 the the tr- it starts to trend. Oh, I want that on my house. I want to save. I want to save money on my utility bill. So what happens? That's. That is going to undermine the establishment, the utility companies. If you're powering your house with, you know, if you're circumventing, if you're going around having to pay Edison or whatever your local local uh, water company is, it's Southern California Edison is in, 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 in um, where I'm at. That's going to be a problem for them because now things are going to start to trend. Your your system of self sustenance is going to start to trend, and <clears throat> and so they have to they have to stop that. So they send the government at you. They they will target you. They will target people. There are people that they that they go after. But that's one of the reasons the government will go after you. Okay. <clears throat> so getting back to the coronavirus, um. Um, quickly, let me let me just skim over the 100th monkey effect. You guys can Google this because I'm probably going to not explain it precisely, but I'll get the main point across. OK, it goes something like this. A hundred monkeys were on a beach. OK, and they ate coconuts. Um, all of them ate coconuts on the beach. Um, and for a while they were eating. Uh, They're just biting into the coconuts. Um, and the coconuts were dirty. They had sand on them. The, the dirt and the sand um, wore down the teeth on each of the monkeys. One monkey, for, one, for whatever reason, 
Okay, the hundredth monkey, for whatever reason, he thought of the ingenious thing to do. And I, and, and and um, like you can look this up to see if it was real. I, like I think it, I think it may have been something they observed. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm pretty sure it, it 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 probably was. So this monkey, he was smart enough to wash his. He was smart enough to wash his coconut in the water. And he washed his coconut in the water. The uh, all each one by one, gradually, the monkeys observed that one monkey out of a hundred monkeys, they observed him wash his coconut off, and they began to wash their coconut off gradually, one by one, until all hundred monkeys were washing their coconuts. Okay, so you know. We don't really understand how animals reason. I argue that animals do reason, and I'm pretty sure you can find some articles out there that 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 will support that. I, being an, being an owner of animals, I've watched my my pit bulls, and I've seen my pit bulls. Like I've seen, like, well, he's really thinking. I've seen my I've seen Tiago, my pit bull, almost do something that. He wasn't supposed to do. And he looked at me and then he just, he walked out. Anyway, side note, really kind of a Barbara Scott, you know, separate discussion. Um, <clears throat> so point to that story is the psych psychology, which informs government, which informs all aspects of academia. They understand the power of, of, um, I, I don't I, I can't recall what you would call this. The the, the power of, of, of one individual really. One individual can can, can start a change. You know, and, and the thing the, the idea is, you know, if a behavior is practical and it's and it's rewarding enough, it will it will change one by one how people do things. Just like washing the coconut changed how all those one hundred monkeys ate their coconuts. Okay? So <clears throat> When we're talking about independent news sources, when we're talking about activism, the government will has a vested interest in sort of um, they call it neutralizing these sources. If, even if they have to discredit the news source or individual, they will do so, and they will do so um, from from media from media um, through media through media reports, and they will do this through. Um, even at your local law enforcement level, so FBI, um, police, and 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 for those who don't really understand FBI, see we we've been given a lot of um like espionage movies, and we sort of kind of we've we've been given these these movies, these law enforcement movies and FBI movies, and we sort of think they're cool. They're really kind of. Uh, a dark, a dark hand that sort of acts behind law enforcement. You know, they're really kind of they play they play both sides of crime and or and law and order. So when we think about ca case in point is the crack epidemic. You know, they 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 poison. They they help facilitate with CIA. They help facilitate uh, drugs and foreign weapons. There's a reason why you have a Kalashnikov and an AK-47 and an Uzi submachine gun in an inner city in an inner city neighborhood. Who in the hood is going to Israel to 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 broker arms deals to get Uzis in the hood? Who is who in the hood? Who in the hood is is going to Russia to broker arms deals for Alexander Kalashnikov 47s, AK 47s? No, your FBI and your CIA put these guns and that, and, and and of course it, it, it you know M 16s, AR 15s, um, you know those are in the hood. Somebody told me. Somebody told me on here. Uh, he was in the army. Uh, yes, the brother. The brother is taking time away from from Facebook right now. He was in the army. He said that when when the army is done in an area, they will leave all of their guns smack dab in the middle of the community. They'll just leave them. Now I don't know who else has been um, overseas and has has seen this, but but that's that's one thing I've I've heard. Um, <clears throat> 
And so, so, so getting back, getting back to um, the coronavirus narrative. So all that is to say that there is a concerted effort to govern the people a certain way. And, 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 and from you get, you, it starts with your politicians, which is sort of, which are sort of your, um, your light horse riders, right? They're your white knights, right? And then you have the, the police and the fire department. And then you have, um, then you have the dark horses that w- the CIAs, the FBI's who will do dirt in order to get things to go in the, in the direction of government interest. So if that means sabotaging an innocent person's life, Okay, um, you can think about all all the activists of from the '60s until now. Uh, shalom, shalom, everyone. Welcome. Thank, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the. Um, I'm, I'm talking. I'm giving um, commentary on 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 the on the um, coronavirus narrative, and so there's there's little um, sort of rabbit holes I'm going down, and it's going to help sort of tie everything in together. Um, so so when you see when you see um, uh, Andrew Cuomo, okay, when, on 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 NBC, when you see Mayor De Blasio, we're going to talk about Mayor De Blasio in a little bit. Um, giving these messages, uh, Cu- Cuomo was talking about how we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't be. The idea was that we shouldn't be any more afraid of it than uh, the flu. Okay, we, it, it, you know, it's the panic. He said the panic is just out of control and it's unnecessary. He said, sure, sure, there are three thousand and eight hundred, you know, people infected. Sure, there's a, you know, a couple hundred dead. And that's not good. But the panic, <laughs> you know, and then he'll go into these, he'll give these these little um, unique specialized statistics on how, um, you know, the demographic that it's suffering the most. These really sort of speculative, you know, like the, the numbers lend itself to the speculation and the government is sort of. Of, of, of latching on to that speculation and say, you know, only old people are impacted. Only, only, you know, the, 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 if you're under 50 and you're healthy and then the kids, you know, they're not as impacted, you know, so no need to panic. But, and then they'll say this, we lack testing. You know, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the National Institute of Allergies and, and, and Infectious Diseases, he's saying we're not getting testing on time. We're not doing enough testing. All they're going, all they really have to grab onto is the number of people that are coming in and reporting themselves. And then what are they saying? Self quarantine. Self quarantine. Talk about De Blasio. I heard De Blasio say, and I haven't heard it. He he spoke for two. Chris Cuomo. Uh, I'm sorry. Andrew Cuomo spoke for 37 minutes. And then de Blasio has a two hour spill or he, you know, what I, I didn't watch the whole two hours, but I heard some of what he said. And, and I just I was so provoked that I, I, I had to turn it off and, and, and I felt the need to come out and air some things out. Um, <clears throat> what did he say? It's up to you, New Yorkers. It's up to this really comes down to us at the grassroots effort as a grassroots effort. Pulling together as New Yorkers, you know, this this passionate, just emotional schlop, you know, that, that doesn't really inform people on how to really on how to really protect themselves. It's really sort of things that that really sort of emotionally mobilize you like that, that kind of gets you bought into what he wants to government, to corporate interests, because, you know, he has sponsors. You know, Mayor de Blasio is bought. You know, these are things that we sh- we sh- we need to keep in mind when we listen to these politicians. I haven't li- I haven't heard anything from the governor the governor of California yet um, today, uh, so I won't really speak on him. Um, but 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 I heard Cuomo and de Blasio, and I was just cussing the whole way through. Uh, de Blasio said something like, um, you know. Washing your hands, um, uh, hand sanitizing, self, you know, staying away, not coming into work when you're sick. This is going to change the trajectory of this crisis. Are you fucking kidding? Are you kidding? You don't. The reality is, you don't know what's going to change the the trajectory of this crisis. You don't know. 
You guys aren't even testing. And if you and if they are testing, there's suspicion that they're not releasing the numbers, that they're suppressing the release of the numbers. China's doing it. Korea's doing it. Iran's doing it. Italy's been doing it. You telling me the, the number one powerhouse in the world is not suppressing information? We're smarter than that. We're smarter than that, Americans. <clears throat> but, but Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's the, um, he's sort of kind of overseeing, you know, he's kind of considered a health official with the whole crisis. He's saying, he's noting the, 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 the lack of testing that hasn't been coming out. New York, Cuomo himself was noting that the, um, you know, the face masks and the hand sanitizers, there's, there's a shortage, there's a huge demand. But, but, but guess what? Coronavirus is infecting everyone. Politicians are, politicians are instructing people to stay home. So what do you think the, fa- this, the, the Purell factories and the 3M factories, well, what do you think they look like? How busy do you think they are? Like how, how tough of a time are they having to, to, to get people to work? That, that's an important question to ask. Because what you see here is a, is a, is a, is a, a system that is, that is confused, a system that is malfunctioning. There's pressure, pressure traveling everywhere. It's vibrating. Okay, What you're seeing is instability, blame pointing. Blaming demands, unmet demands, insuff- in- ineffectiveness, insufficiency. Like you're seeing this for a reason. The system is shaking. The, the, the system is shaking. That's what you're seeing. And and we're going to we're going to we're going to get into um, how how syst- how the system is reacting based on based on history. On past empires, systems that shake, systems that become unstable. China is a very good example of what's what's going to what what I believe is eventually going to happen all over the world. And we already have seen. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but China. Let's look at China. They've imposed draconian measures. Stay in. You can't come out. If you come out and your mask is not on, if you're, if you're out for not, for not a good reason, right? And it, and it seems to be really kind of, it's imposed strictly in Wuhan, but I don't imagine that they are, they are enforcing it very consistently. So, but, but, but what, what, what we see in Wuhan is we see people, lots of people getting apprehended. They're apprehended by police. Um, their quarantine centers, they've come out. There's a, there's a report out of a, a, a Wuhan Chinese, um, I'm not sure if he was a medic, but he was like a spokesperson for one of the quarantine hospitals. He said, guys, um, the people in here are probably not going to come out. And he was, and I think the people were sort of crowding around to receive medical help. And he was like saying, hey, this is what we're doing here. Some of you don't meet the criteria, criteria. Some of you do. This is what's going on in the center. And one of the things he, he, he discloses is like, these people are, aren't probably going to be released. <clears throat> so, so my main point was, was the imposition of draconian um, measures, the, the martial law, right? China was highly unstable. And, 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 when you listen to uh, Andrew Cuomo, when you listen to Mayor de Blasio, when you listen to Donald Trump, Donald Trump, he, he seems the most oblivious to this whole situation. Some of those things he was saying just, just shows a, an absolute disconnect. And I don't know if it's, if it's purposeful or, and deliberate or maybe he's just having fun golfing in Miralago or he's just, he's just concerned with other things. I, I, don't, I don't know, but he's... He said it was a hoax. He's kind of shows he kind of kind of shows different things, and and I would imagine he's really just trying to um, keep pressure from building. Um, um, but um, so so in in China, their 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 political climate, their government, the people are really conditioned to sort of obeying. 
the government. Okay, so so imposing those laws ex, um, expediently like that, it's very easy for them to do um, because people are used to seeing government um, aggression against its people um, and having an authoritarian rule. Our government is a little bit different, <clears throat> though it sort of disguises itself. It's really kind of almost the same. It just kind of is it's just a little bit different because if, if the U.S. needs to, we have... Leg, uh, legal infrastructure in place to become a China. We really do. Um, it doesn't call itself communism. It doesn't call itself fascism, but, but it's, it essentially is. It doesn't call itself totalitarian, but, it, but, the, but the states, we, you know, those who know, those who know, who, who paid attention in political science and in history classes, you know that the commander in chief can take over and, and it can become a different game. And so it seems what's happening, they're comparing coronavirus to war. You already hear it. it's a war, it's a war on coronavirus. You know, Germany said we're in a war. You know, and so they, they could be priming us. They very well may be priming us to, and I, and I believe so, I'm only saying, I'm only being modest for those who are listening. Um, but, but when we talk about how out of control this disease is, then you know, there's a point where these politicians, they'll take the mask off and, and then their number one priority would be to maintain power because that's what, a, that's what a hegemonic power is supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. So all of the things that you're hearing from de Blasio and Cuomo and Trump and, and Pence, okay, they, they're, they're telling you exactly what they're supposed to do. Let me tell you from experience, guys. I've worked in a bureaucracy. I was a, I was a public, uh, public school education teacher. I know what it looks like when there's pressure building in a bureaucracy at the various levels. How, how you know, they, they give people the runaround. There's runarounds to everyone. Everybody's running around and giving the runaround to, oh, ask this person. I don't know. Ask this. Everybody's trying to maintain political correctness. Everybody's trying not to disturb the status quo. If, while not trying to receive the blame that somebody is, you know, needs to take to own up to. I've seen that with my own eyes. I know what the speech, I know what the euphemistic language sounds like. And anybody who has worked in a bureaucracy, any type of bureaucracy, you know that the system is to not be rocked and everything is to maintain the system. And whoever causes the causes problems in the system is going to be dealt with, mitigated, dealt with. The the, the bureau, bureaucracies are are systems designed to achieve an end. And when you disrupt the status quo, you disrupt the very fundamental purpose of the bureaucracy. When you start to come with these new ideas, and when you start to say things that do not maintain the survival of the bureaucracy, okay? <clears throat> so what we hear is all the euphemistic language, you know, they don't want to acknowledge the truth. When you call it what it is, you can fix it. But when, when your main focus is to save the system, save the bureaucracy, then that becomes something that is against bureaucratic interests, so calling this coronavirus what it is, a pandemic, when, 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 you're not, when you're not calling what it is, when your interests are to sort of anesthetize the people and, and sort of lull them back to sleep so they don't change their behavior regarding this coronavirus environment that's sort of mustering up, like the disease is spreading. And, and, and so like things are not adding up. They give these statistics and they try to get you lost in the numbers. But but listen up, guys. Listen. What do we what what do we what do we see is a constant and is not changing? And and you can hold these politicians to this. And you can call bullshit when you see it, when you hear it. The disease, the infection rate is increasing every day, every week, by the hundred by, by the tens, even by the hundreds. OK. And and the mortality rates are increasing 
when you when you watch these politicians, when you see Cuomo, when you see De Blasio, okay, <clears throat> ask them, ask yourself the question: When is he going to say that the infection rates are people aren't getting infected anymore? And then that's a whole nother conversation because he's going to have to prove it. I think De Blasio said. I can't remember if it was de Blasio or I think it was Cuomo because he really kind of went in on the specifics of them identifying the, the disease and what to do with it. Uh, he said that, um, oh my goodness, I can't remember the words he said, but 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 basically there is a there is a um, there is a problem with diagnosing. Okay, so when you when you when Let's think this out. People are sick. They're going to come in to the hospital. The hospital, in order to say, hey, we need to treat you for coronavirus, they have to test you first. The hospitals are lacking testing materials. They are lacking diagnostic tests. On top of it, the few tests that they do give... They're inconsistent. People are testing positive one time, then they're testing negative, then, you know, and then they're saying, and, and, and there's really no way, we really kind of have to take their word for it. Uh, people are recovering and being sent home. You know, people are recovering. What, is, well, what does recovery look like? The, the, the withdrawal of the symptoms? You mean the symptoms that people don't have to show when they have coronavirus in the first place? Are they really recovering? But see, the government's going to latch on to that because that's something good that they can say. Why? It helps them maintain the status quo. It helps them save the system, their bureaucracy. It helps them stay. It helps them um, um, release the pressure. When people can say, oh, people are recovering. There is hope. You know, people, people really start to sort of you know, they, 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 they look at their, uh, their to-do to -do list that says Costco and face mask and, and uh, sanitizing. And they say, oh, well, maybe we can wait a little bit because <laughs> it, it sounds good. But the thing is, these people, there's, there's not enough testing happening. Um, people are coming in. They're, qu they're quarantining based on, on symptoms, on reports of symptoms. And so even when, they, when people pass away, Okay, this listen up closely. When people pass away, the doctor could be like, "Man, you know what? That person, the the medical provider, the professional could be like, I, we didn't test them, but that person probably died a corona related death. Legally, he can't do that. You know, it may in, it may be informative. It may be informative to say, you know what, doc, I think you're right." These people, they, they did that, Corona. I believe you in your medical opinion. <clears throat> One second, I got to turn this. They may say, I believe your, your medical opinion. But Doc can't, can't really say that because Doc hasn't tested it. It would, be, it would be like a breach of like, you know, professionality. Of course you can't say a person has a disease when you haven't tested them. But we know that... People are getting infected so fast that they don't have enough. They probably don't have enough time and personnel to test to accurately give a number. And, and, and when you listen to Cuomo, when you listen to de Blasio, they're banking on you not having seen the videos on YouTube. OK, <clears throat> when you look up some of these sources, NTD News, that's um, how do I um, neat Tommy, uh, neat Tommy. I don't know what NTD stands for. I'm, I'm just giving you these names so you un, so you won't misunderstand the, the the letters, the abbreviation. NTD, nutty, nutty Tom, um, <clears throat> drum. Okay, NTD News. Okay, look that up. They've got some good on the ground reports. Um, they got some good reporting, some critical reporting about what's going on in China. Are we wrong news? A-R-I-R-A-N-G, a Korean news source. They're talking about what's going on in Korea. These are, these are sources you can look at 
to see what's going on in China. Newsmonger is a very raw news source, but they, they're, a lot of people are sending, uploading, um, it, a lot of people in Wuhan are uploading videos of what's going on on the ground. It's like, it's like, it's like their version of Snapchat. I think it's like their version of Snapchat or, or Twitter or something like that. And so these people are uploading this stuff and, and, and it's getting to the States. It's getting in American hands. It's getting other people's hands and they're uploading these videos. And so you can kind of get a sample of what's happening on the ground. And it's consistent with all the chaos, like, you know, <clears throat> the draconian measures. When, when you hear CNBC saying, oh, China, Wuhan citizens are locked down, you can go to some of the, the, the newsmonger. And for the past few weeks, he's been loading, you know, um, videos of, of, the, of this actually happening. These news sources, CNBC, um, NPR, CNN, all these news sources, they're pulling these videos. They're actually using these videos and making reports off of them. But you can see, and not, they're not using them all. Right, because they're going to report according to their corporate interests. Greetings, shalom, shalom, everyone who has has joined. Greetings, brother Tori. Uh, <clears throat> and so, what I'm talking about is is gathering information so that you can make a decision. Because if you watch CNN, if you watch NBC, you might be misled. What I'm seeing on what I'm seeing on on Facebook with a lot of diff- with some different people. There's a <clears throat> They're asking questions like, is this really as big of a deal as it is? And I'm saying, oh, the news is hyping it up. No, the news, <laughs> the news, is, the news is actually going in another direction. They're not telling the truth. <laughs> They're not telling enough truth. Because the truth is this situation is out of control. There's, a re- there's the reason of the, the term pandemonium, I'm sorry, not pandemonium, um, pandemic exists. Like pandemic <clears throat> is a very big word. And because of a lot of people don't understand what that means. And we haven't seen a real pandemic of this caliber in our lifetime. It doesn't, there's a disconnect. We don't get, we don't get what coronavirus can do to America. Because it, it you know, it, it, the, the, the test, the, the real test would see how, how America is responding in the next coming weeks. Because it took a while for Wuhan to get as bad as it did. <clears throat> and so, um, and Wuhan was, was terrible. You know, de Blasio is saying, oh, it's only affecting this demographic. Only if you're below 50 and, and you're, not, um, you're not showing these symptoms. And if you don't have any underlying conditions. no. Listen, in Wuhan, everybody was getting infected. The dogs are infected now. But if you want to really talk about what matters, in the hospitals, the medics, the medics were getting infected. There's a hosp- the head of a hospital died. A leading doctor who was a whistleblower, he died. The, the, the news has mentioned him. <clears throat> How the government silenced him before he passed away. Okay, like medics are becoming infected, nurses are becoming infected. Now there's reports of the the funeral homes. Let's go into that really quick because, like I said, China is really kind of a it, it's a worst case scenario of what could happen to America. There's no reason why what happened in China couldn't happen in America. All right, and and I'm saying I'm not saying this th- th- these things to scare people to scare you guys, but there's if if you decide. To, that there are certain ways to protect yourself. You can do so based on what I'm telling you and not the, the panacea, this fake artificial narrative that these corporate, you know, polit- politically sponsored, you know, news outlets are sort of shoving in your faces. You know, and we're going to go into some of the some of the how how America has started to be affected, but but looking at Wuhan real quick, <clears throat> the medics are the medics are are affected. They're dying. Okay, before the medics started dying, people were piling in to the Wuhan hospitals. The Wuhan hospitals, the system is totally overwhelmed. Now they built the they built that new hospital or quarantine center or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> 
And that provided relief to the eight hospitals in Wuhan. I believe there are eight major like principal hospitals that are treating people for uh, coronavirus. Okay. And so these hospitals are all inundated with work. The, the, all the medics are working overtime. Okay. And you can verify this on the news sources that I just told you. NTD News is covering it. Newsmonger. Just go through their video playlist for the past month. And, and you'll see it all for yourself. Um, but uh, the medics are, are, are overworked. They're, there's people, even and now this is happening in Korea, okay? Um, they're working with, uh, with four hours sleep. And they're working, you know, two, three days, you know, hours upon, like virtually the whole day. They're not sleeping. I think in Korea, a medic just recently passed out from being overworked. I'm not sure if they're in critical condition or if they died, but uh, they, they showed the video and the person was like, like laid out. <clears throat> this is a very real thing. Like, and so they're, they're handing you guys this, this whole idea, oh, wash your hands, wash your hands. You know, and and it's, it's the most absurd, it's, 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 it's absolutely absurd. Like the disease is spreading from one, from one continent to another, and you think it's because people aren't washing their hands? Like that's really what you're telling us? Wash your hands, because washing your, you know, like that's the best you can do? That's, that's, it's bullshit, guys. It's not about washing hands. It's a respiratory illness that could be passed um, through fluid transmission. And so whether you wash your hands or not, if you, if you breathe the stuff in, from somebody who is just exhaling or talking to you, you, you you're, a person is liable to catch it. It's not about washing hands. I mean, I guess, it, you know, you're scratching the surface. I guess what, you, can't, you can't lose, right? You can't lose because it's not going to hurt anything to wash your hands. But the fact that they're sort of promoting it as like this significant thing that's going to significantly, drastically reduce... And they're really pushing it as if, as if almost as, as a setup, like, oh, see, the U.S. fell victim to, um, fell victim to coronavirus because the Americans weren't washing their hands. Like, get this bullshit out of, out of here. Stop that bullshit. Like, Americans have a culture. Americans just, for, for decades now, it's, you know, as, as, as if Americans haven't been washing their hands. As if since h one H1N1, SARS broke. We haven't been coughing in our, in our, <laughs> in our arms. And, 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 now that, and now people are being ravaged by this disease from one continent to the next. And you're telling me the first line of defense. We got a whole market of hand sanitizers, different, flavor, different, different aromas, different scents. We got a market for this stuff. Are you telling me as if I'm not, as if I'm not washing my hands enough? Like it's is 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Hey, <clears throat> it's it's ridiculous. So, all right, okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> um, so it's crazy. Like they're telling us not to wash our hands as if that's like the. The first problem, the first reason. Oh, something's happening. This, this is a big, this is a pandemic. And they're looking to relieve pressure. <clears throat> so, again, this information is to, um, is to inform you guys so you, can, so you can make independent decisions on what you should do. Because <clears throat> they're not going to p- put you in the best position to think and say, hey, you know what? We need to really start changing this and doing that significant things maybe even buying could change your buying <clears throat> could change what you buy could change how you eat but if we're never sort of even painfully honest about 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 what's what coronavirus is doing you'll just keep on doing the same things and that's what it seems like these these politicians are doing <clears throat> this is a big deal so <clears throat> Going from um, Wuhan to um, to America, how how is what's happening in Wuhan affecting or in China affecting America? All right. So like when 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 the coronavirus hit, 
America, I'm sorry, China told all of its citizens to quarantine. So the, the city of Wuhan was completely paralyzed. Nobody in the streets, nobody at work. Now, if you think about all the, all the things we use that are made in China. <clears throat> oh, get out of here. <laughs> no, I just, I, just, I just hustled out of a, a room that was going to be filled with people talking. So, um, so, so um, when we are thinking about how Wuhan is, was paralyzed... So if we think about their, all their manuf, all their, um, their their factories, all the things that process the things that when we open the package or when we look on it, it says made in China, right? All those factories are stopped. All the, you know, you know. So so when the, so when the factories stopped stopped because they you know, they stopped packing stuff to send to America. They start, you play too much, Yashu. You need to stop. <laughs> That's a serious thing. You got the feds knocking on my door. Hey, we heard you uh, coughing. We need to check your temperature. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, man, I heard black people wasn't catching it. Um, but anyway, so so people, um, so in the factories, in the Chinese factories, they're not sending boxes and, and putting them on the ships. So what what how does that affect the shipping industry? If China's supplying to the world, if they're manufacturing to the world, namely the US, that means boats are going to stop coming. Boats with those 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 big crates full of product and merchandise. All the stuff that that it, that 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 ends up on your retail store shelves that probably ends up in your um, in your fast food restaurant, um, food supply, that's not, that's not getting to American shores. So, so the shipping industry has taken a hit. So that means people who manage the shipping companies, they're like, okay, we can't use that many ships. So, so sailors are out of jobs. Okay. And then product is not getting to the States. Um, uh, if you go down my wall, if you, and if you even Google, there's lots of, um, lots of videos you can watch, um, Port of Los Angeles. Okay. Listen guys, California is the number one economy in the States. It's the fifth largest economy in the world. And their port, their, their, their main port, Port of Los Angeles is lying empty. It's lying empty. Right, because those Chinese factories for a while they weren't putting stuff in boxes and sending them to the ships to come here. So, 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 what do you have? <clears throat> what do you have right now? You have shortage of all those things that people are hustling for in Costco and in the grocery stores. Paper, 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 te pa um, toilet paper, soap. Water. <clears throat> they, you know, depending on where you're, I don't think local water is usually from local sources. So I don't think it's, I don't know, maybe like Dasani or something is shipping it from China. I don't know. <clears throat> but say if the if the bottles if the bottles are are produced in China too, if the plastic bottles are produced in China, then bottles aren't getting to the watering watering um water companies water bottle companies. So they're sitting with wells full of, you know, a reservoir full of, full of water that's not going out because they don't have bottles from China. <clears throat> Just and, and, and you guys can unpack that all for yourselves. We, for decades, we've seen all oh, made in China, made in China. So you guys can figure out what's not going to get to the shelves. Now, um, the president, um, Xi Ching, he just sent he's encouraging people to go back to work. Regardless of there being no cure for coronavirus, regardless of the infection rate, you know, it's, it's still spreading. People are still dying, okay? Because now it's like, oh, oh, well, we, we tried to, you know, here we go. This is instability again, okay? We, we mandated the people quarantine based on, based on our mandate. 
you know. But now corporate interests, political interests are, are, are becoming a high risk. Now we have to tell people something the opposite of what we were telling them to do just last week, just two weeks ago. P- things that we were jailing people for. We were apprehending people, people who may have died in jail. Oh, yeah, that's another thing, too. Oh, yeah. Coronavirus is is running rampant in the jails. Oh, yeah. How many lives did they destroy by telling people to to, you know, by, by jailing people? How many lives did they destroy? That's kind of scary to think about. <clears throat> so there's no reason why what what happened in China can't happen here, and it's really it's really kind of showing signs. The first thing we'll see is the medical system becoming overwhelmed. Now, because China was the sort of first case scenario, they didn't know what to hide from. They didn't, they're bearing a shame and all the governments are, you know, you got the World, World Health Organization, you know, the, the white knights of the world, right? You know, are, are, are the stand-up transparent um, organization, right? They're lauding China for their management of the coronavirus. But then these, the other world governments, kind of seeing a mix of things, they're sort of criticizing China. Really? Like U.S. is U.S. You'll find like little pop, popped shots at China. <clears throat> and now Italy's, Italy's affected. <laughs> Italy's going. Italy's going. They're bringing the prices down for airlines, cruises. The cost of death is cheap in this world. Oh, yeah. Because they, they're trying to save themselves, right? Like when you hit, when you hit someone... Like it, I don't want to. I hate to use that example, but it's really true. Like when you stub your toe, let's put it this way: when you stub your toe, what's the first thing you do? You yell out. You you know your hands probably, you know you maybe trying to catch your balance, or maybe you're just your hands are expressing the pain like ah. And then what do you do? You bend over and you grab your you grab your foot. And what's the first thing you do with your foot? You curl your toes. Right when when something takes a hit, it recoils. You you see this sort of this sort of this sort of uh, quick burst of like um, I, I don't want to say I don't know how to say it. I guess chaos. Like it's like you know the th- what happens before you lose control. Then you get control to to sort of manage what's happened to you, the damage that's that's taken place. That's what's happening to the economy. Um, so when we think about like the airline industry, Jeff, you, meant, you mentioned the airline industry. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're bringing prices down because they're trying to get people to travel. But what? what one, one second. Okay. But what just happened? Yeah, reaction. Exactly, Jeff. But what, 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 what's, what's happened? Dr. Dr. Michael... Michael Michael Fauci, all right, the the top voice for um, health official. He, I think, aside from um, it's the girl, it's the lady that 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 Mike Pence lets talk in his, you know, her and Michael Michael Fauci are really kind of the top two, but <clears throat> the government, the state government, I want I want to I want to say the federal government. Um, May have done this, but definitely Michael Fauci, top, one of the top health officials, he just said, don't travel, don't travel by ship, <laughs> stay home. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure they said something for, it's going the same way for, for, for the airlines. So, so the airlines are bringing prices down to get people to travel. For those who are like, you know what, I'm just going to live my life, you know, seize the day. Live, drink, and tomorrow we die. I don't know. People who choose not to be worried, they're going to travel and they're going to get a good deal. But <clears throat> what they're seeing is, I think um, there was a, an airline who, who grounded, I want to say, 
eighty percent of his shifts, or maybe forty. Can't remember the number. Some some between forty and eighty, and I know that's a big difference, but but I just read a report, and I want to say it was either Bloomberg or Wall Street Journal. You can um you can kind of you can go see it if you go down my wall. They're flying planes with they're flying empty planes across the world now, and that sounds absolutely bizarre. But the reason they're doing that <clears throat> is because if they don't maintain their flights. If they're not paying, the, see what what the planes do is they they pay to to I guess to dock at airports across the world, and of course, you know clientele funds this, you know, but there's no clientele, so so what's happening? They're paying money out of pocket that they're not getting back from revenue from business revenue to fund the the planes being parked at whatever, docked at whatever airports they're docked at. Now, if they stop traveling, if they stop traveling, for, if, they, if, you know, if they're not showing, if they're scheduled to be at LAX and they're like, you know what, we don't have any clientele, we can't make it. You know, if they do that over, over time, LAX will be like, okay, well, we'll wait, we'll, we'll just get some new clientele so that we can fill this slot. And then that's going to force, that's going to, that's going to force uh um airports and to sort of like adjust their prices, right? <clears throat> so that affects their economy as well. Um I'm busy right now. No, just close your window. You can hear yourself outside. I can hear you outside. Bob, okay, all right. All right. Talking. Um so so um what that's doing is is causing the 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 air the air uh the airports to adjust their prices. Now <clears throat> the the airlines the airlines are going to face a problem because they're not getting the business that they used to, right? They're going to they're going to lose their spots. Shalom Benaya. <clears throat> They're going to lose their slots. And so in order to sort of, as a last ditch effort to sort of keep their slots, they're flying these empty planes. Okay, so uh, so that's one way that the airline, that the airline industry is suffering. And it's gonna get worse because because governments are mandating that people stay home. And and Italy, we see Italy just quarantined. Right, Italy just Italy quarantined, so people aren't flying to Italy, Milan, Lombardy, all those tourists play those beautiful tourists. You know, they're now under under martial law. Um, there's uh, riots in the there's riots in the prisons happening right now. So, <clears throat> so what you're seeing is, you know. You see this enforcement of draconian measures. Italy is going to look different from China because Italy is in China. Um, the European Union, they don't want, they, they issued, um, I think it was Germany who maybe have spoken out, maybe uh, Brussels. They are sort of urging people to not close borders because, you know, Europe wants to, they want to seem like this free place, right? They don't, they, they don't want to look like China. <clears throat> but Milan, Italy can't help it. They they can't help it now. It's it's beyond their control. Um, Pope Pope Francis has it. Well, let me step back. There there's no official report that Pope Francis has it. But Pope France Pope Francis and you guys can look Google this stuff. All this stuff that you know, write it down and 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 throw it into Google after I'm done. Um, or if you got a PC or whatever. Um. Pope Francis has been coughing. He's canceled all his public appearances and he announced that he's going to do his, uh, he did his Sunday message uh, via video stream. All right. So um, it's Italy is affected. It's impacted. UK is impacted. All these economic centers are impacted. All right. So when you're hearing these politicians talk, are you getting an accurate synopsis 
of the situation? Or are you getting a corporate sponsored synopsis of the situation? We know the corporates own America. I'm sorry, the corporations. The corporations own America. America is bought out. <clears throat> but, the, but the dollar is failing. You guys saw the report this morning? The, the, the market crashed. Trading was halted. I think Saudi Arabia has slashed, they, they've slashed their oil prices to be able to sell, right? They've done what the airlines are doing in order to survive, to keep their business alive. But, but guess what? The governments are, are, are encouraging quarantine, encouraging this take off from work. Mayor de Blasio and, 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 and Cuomo, if you're sick, stay home from work. Stay home from, stay home from work. So, no, so if in, nobody's going to work, businesses are going to lose productivity. And that's going to result in lower economic activity. If, if the businesses that need fuel, that need oil, all, uh, all uh, the refinement, oil refinement business, um, all the gas stations, all of the companies that use gas, <clears throat> okay, they're, they're not using as much gas because nobody's at work. They, they say, oh, you know what? Man, people, have, people aren't showing up right now. Man, we're not going to get that much work done today. And the people who are who are up top, who are managing economic productivity and efficiency, they're they're looking ahead, and they're saying, "Hey, you know what? For a week now, for a couple of weeks now, people have been like working from home. They haven't been here, or they've been taking off. So we need to plan for this so that we don't lose revenue. Maybe we'll 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 trim we'll trim some some buying off the top. We'll we'll stop. You know, we'll save." So they're not purchasing, and so that's that's going back. That's tr it's tr it's trickling back up to the oil producers, right? And and you guys know that oil is what the dollar is based on, right? Like you know that's what the dollar is based on. So if the if oil market crashes, this was we just heard today. We in the in the last week we've heard. You know, the Dow dropped this many amount of points. The, the you know, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, you know, the you know, the Fitzy, you know. The Fitzy is down. Everything's down. But we just got the we just got the first report today that the oil is oil market just crashed. Now, what do we see? We see already low gas prices, right? But they're but they're trying to get people to buy gas. You it makes you want to buy gas. Oh, let me go fill up my tank. A dollar eighty three. Ah, I haven't seen that in years. Wow, let's go fill up. Hey, let's go for everybody. Go fill up. And that's good for business. It's good for short term. But <clears throat> where are you gonna go? You may have some good ideas this weekend, but then two two three weeks from now, it's like, oh man, you know this coronavirus is going down. We gotta stay home. Uh. Man, you know, some people who work on salary, they, they, they can work at home. But the people who have to be have to show up, the people who work blue collar jobs, they have to show up. And so when money gets a little tight, it's like, oh, man, we got to. Like, oh, man, we got to save. We can't go out. We can't go out this weekend. We can't go. We can't go out this weekend. We got to save. Listen, my boss just, you know, you know, for for a doc, for a foreman. For for a person working at Port of LA, he's like, yo, we 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 definitely can't go out. We, we can't. Maybe we'll go. We'll do a little something. But um, I know we were planning those vacations, or I know we were planning um to go up to to go out of state, or we we're gonna go up north. You know, uh, do some wine tasting and have a ball. But maybe we'll do it this weekend. But I, but but we we gotta start looking down the road. Because for for a doc for 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 a dock worker at the Port of Los Angeles. They just announced this guy named Derek Saucedo, who works at Port of Los Angeles. He tweeted that he was in a meeting and they said they're going to lay off 40 percent of their personnel. And then and then he and then he showed a video of what the Port of Los Angeles looked like It's empty. Y'all could y'all could go down my wall, go down my wall and look at the video. So it, it and, 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 and every the business affects everything like it, it's all tied. The oil is, is definitely in everything. 
and all the people who work salary jobs who are okay now. Like, <clears throat> the, your, the janitors in your buildings will stop showing up as frequently. The, tr- the trash in the hallway will stay full, might get a little stinky. Your boss might start asking people to take out the trash. <laughs> because when, 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 when something's damaged, it recoils. So, so, so your jobs is go- your jobs are going to change. Your your environment, your work environments are going to change. The people who clean the building are going to come as frequently. Maybe you'll see maybe you'll see some people who are different who take a cheaper price. You see some new new cleaners. Um, job job lunches, job luncheons, bonuses, you know, all those perks. You know, c- coffee at the you know. The water tank, might you might you might see an empty, finally see an empty, uh, you know. It's gonna start to look different, right? Like the economy is gonna be affected, and so, <clears throat> so these are the way. These this is how how these are the signs. Um, dairy, I don't know dairy food. I I think that that might go up. I'm not sure. I don't even want to speak on that because I'm not sure. <clears throat> but the stuff that's in America is always going to be more expensive than the stuff that's produced internationally because that's the we the the capitalists they they took all those jobs out of the states to get a cheaper to get it produced for a cheaper price. But the thing is, we don't make enough as Americans anymore. You know, we don't make enough as Americans to afford um to afford toys produced in the states like if you get something made in the states it's good quality you know all that stuff is cheap because it's made out of out of state you know it's all was, was to suit cost efficiency you know you bring you bring you bring car manufacture back to the states which is not going to happen because oil prices are going down. A car menu, a car corporation would never, it wouldn't, they wouldn't think of such a thing. They're looking to more poorer people who are willing to get the job done. You know, they'll train poor people out there before they do that. But you get a you get a car made in the states, it's gonna look good. See, the, they couldn't afford for a car to be made in the states anymore. You know, because we. The people who are managing our money system and our and our lawmakers, they've made it. They've created a climate to where inflation has is out of control. Can you imagine? Okay, a car like Hyundai or a Kia being made for like by having to buy it for a couple hundred because they brought it back to the states, couple hundred thousand. You know, like that's the, like you're going to pay. It takes a lot more dollars to buy things than it did a long time ago. If you got a, an interesting book on that, guys, is The Day the Dollar Dies. I forgot the author. It's, a, it's an amazing book, though. Great book. Pretty much reads like pre- reads prophetically. <clears throat> but, you know, when you heard like <clears throat> when you heard like back in the day, you hear these the older people. Well, back in my day, I used to buy a, you know five gallons of gas for you know a gallon of gas for seventy five cents. Buy gas seventy five cents on a gallon. You know, when I was a kid, I used to you know we used to see a dollar eighteen. You know, and it got up pretty high to like a dollar. I want to say in the seventies, by two thousand and one, and then September eleventh happened. And then gas that evening was 99 cents. I remember it. I remember. Um, but but this is, these are the ways that the economy is affected in America. This is the way that coronavirus is sort of paralyzing the world. Um, but if, you don't, if you're not able to see these things with your eyes, if you're not able, able to see these videos on Newsmonger, if you're, ever, if you're not watching NTD, if you're not watching Every Wrong News, if you're not watching China Uncensored, you're going to miss this, 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 re, these realities, and you're going to wonder, well, is it as bad as it is? It, is it as they're saying it to be? Is it as bad? 
you're gonna you're gonna say, <clears throat> you know, you're gonna believe Chris, you're gonna believe Andrew Cuomo, you're gonna believe Mayor de, Mayor De Blasio, and you're gonna you're gonna be lulled to sleep because their words sound sweet, but I know the truth because I've been I've been keeping track of this coronavirus, and it's just it's madness, it's madness the things that they're saying. I'm cussing, pulling my hair out, <laughs> pulling my hair out, these guys. <clears throat> you know, and but but it's what they have to do. Um, so that was the Matrix stuff. Um, I'm wondering if I should just end it here and start a new live. I don't know. Um, I hate to do that. So I'm just gonna keep going, man. Sorry, all the people who aren't ready for this. Um, y'all might call it Hebrew Israelite talk, or y'all might call it. Some conspiracy theory stuff, some tinfoil hat stuff. I'm gonna give you a heads up. It's gonna get real deep and it's gonna get real weird. Um, not like inappropriate weird, but we're gonna talk about things that people don't norm that, that you don't really talk about at the water cooler at your job. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm gonna. T it's gonna get religious. It's gonna. Get, so if you don't, if you don't like the Bible, then you know heads up. You know, um, but y'all know what I'm about. Um, I don't hold any secrets. I'm an open book, um, <clears throat> and I'm rough. I get I, I'm pretty rough around the edges sometimes. Um, so when we're thinking about all of these things that are happening, right? It, it's 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 weird because the coronavirus. My my, when it first broke, we saw the patent, right? We saw the patent at this the CDC patent. We know Doctor Cunningham. Uh, was found mysteriously floating in a river after writing warnings in a, I want to say it was a diary or a journal. He was writing to someone about how he was testing a flu virus, you know, that was killing all of his patients. We're talking about the chief commander of the CDC, Dr. Cunningham, black guy. He's dead now, mysteriously, okay? And then that happened, what, within the last year or two? And now we have coronavirus here, and there's a patent for it? So <clears throat> it's, it seems like it was done, like China is blaming America now. Um, they're calling it a biological weapon. There is, you can type in genetic weaponry. I don't know who released the article I want to say it was like an independent source, but they're saying that we should prep for genetic bioweapon warfare, which is crazy because that's a war. I believe, if, if I recall, that's a war crime. That's a war crime using biological weapons. Now, there is no Supreme Court of the world, right? Like we have the United Nations and that's supposed to be like the accountability that's what every nation's accountable to. We have the Pope in the Catholic Church. We have we have the Pope in the West who is possibly sick with the coronavirus. We have the <clears throat> we have the Islamic Imam. Okay, he's kind of like the Pope of, of of Mecca. Side note, Mecca is paralyzed. They've closed their borders to Iran, which which is Iran is probably the worst effect, the second worst affected out of outside of China. Then it's South Korea, and then I think Italy. <clears throat> um, I posted a link, uh, by the way, about this about the tracking the coronavirus disease. John Hopkins, it's on my wall. If you guys go down, um, you can find it. But I have I post a lot very frequently. Um, so if you guys want to see, just just. Tracking coronavirus, John Hopkins, and it'll take you to a site. <clears throat> John Hopkins has been tracking the coronavirus, I guess, since it's the first inception in China. Um, so, <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. So, side note, um, uh, Mecca is there's you know right before their Hajj. I think Ramadan is. Uh, I don't know. I think Ramadan is kind of in the fall. But there's like hajjas and stuff. The place is typically busy and it has lots of people circling around the uh, the Kaab. 
um, pretty much all year, and the city is essentially paralyzed. They're taking measures to pre- to to prevent the spread of coronavirus. The whole the the quote unquote quote unquote holy city of Mecca. Uh, so all the Christian apologists viewing the vocabs uh, get word to. I'm sure I haven't checked checked David Woods' um, YouTube yet, but I'm sure he's having a ball with that. I'm sure he will once he gets once he gets word of it. But the holy city of Mecca is taking precautions to prevent the spread of coronavirus. They've blocked their borders to Iran. Iran's not, you know. Um, <clears throat> they're spraying all over the place. What else? So, um, I was talking about the world organizations that sort of hold the organizations that hold the world accountable. You have the, the United Nations, you have the Catholic Pope, you have the Imam, you have, and then you have uh, the Buddha, the Dalai Lama. Da- Dalai Lama. Um, <clears throat> I haven't heard much from, from the Dalai Lama. Uh, and is, uh, Sa- Mecca is paralyzed, and Rome, the Vatican, is, the coronavirus is going around, in the Vatican. The Iranian minister to the Vatican was sick and he possibly could have infected the Pope because he was, you know. Um, But when we talk about um, biological weapons, the use of biological weapons, you know, like governments can do that. Like it's a war crime, but really there's really no, no organization who can say, like it's an agreed upon sort of tr- treaty, treatise, agreement between um, um, nations that they say, okay, we agree to not use, you know, and then and then they can send inspectors, right? But <clears throat> you know, but m- put it this way: when 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 the U.S. didn't believe that biological weapons weren't being used by, or weapons of mass destruction wasn't being used by. Um, um, Hassan, um, Hussein, right? They went in. They they said we don't believe what you guys are saying. The U. I think they sent, the UN sent people. All these international um, agencies they sent people, and you said we don't believe you. We're gonna go in ourselves. Because really, if 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 a nation wants to disagree, they can just disagree. They have the guns. They could just go in. And you have political alliances, and you have, and all these political alliances, um, if they're not, su- if they're superpowers, they have strong militaries, right? So who do we respect? We respect Russia because they'll kick our ass. We we respect China. All these all these people, all these these governments have nuclear capabilities. They could put a hurting. Kim Jong Un is crazy. He'll put, he'll George Bush the button if he has to. And Iran, we know Iran, they're they're hobbled, but they have capability. Okay? So <clears throat> at any given time, like nations don't have to agree. They don't have to be accountable if they don't want to. It's really sort of like a political thing. So using a biological weapon, can you imagine? China is on the way China was well on the way to becoming the number one superpower. They are they are taking the cyber information um world by storm Huawei was just is just taking over the in- infrastructure and in this could you could you imagine the coronavirus being the hiroshima of biological weapons could you imagine it <clears throat> wasn't the timing a little bit too wasn't the timing wouldn't the timing have been perfect Just put it that way <clears throat> Um. Oh man, what are some um other places I was gonna go? Oh, okay, yeah. So we're on the religious thing now. <clears throat> so, so there seems to be intentionality behind this coronavirus. I guess that was the main point. There seems to be intentionality behind this coronavirus, but then at the same time, it's out of control. It's 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 killing leaders. Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is infected. He's possibly gone back to Texas to infect other people in Texas. Um, we know Mike Pence was quarantined. 
Matter of fact, let me let me backpedal. They said Ted Cruz self-quarantined. I'm going to go ahead and presume by that that he's infected with coronavirus. Mike Pence, independent, independent uh, co-UK, they reported Mike Pence was on quarantine. Funny thing is, my quarantine show, I'm sorry, Mike Pence shows up to those, those uh, public addresses. So I'm, I'm looking at him, you know, you know, rosy cheeks, sweat, you know, the, the, one of the, two of the, uh, two of the infected uh, ministers of, at, at Iran who was doing a public address, one of them was sweating. And I think he, this one who was sweating, he's, he was definitely confirmed to have it. And I think he may have passed. They both may be passed. I, I don't know. I, I lost track. I, I need to look at Iran. <clears throat> but they gave a whole address saying, hey, it's not that big of a deal. Go about your daily life. And this was maybe two weeks ago on a Monday. And then a couple of days later, by the end of the week, they were confirmed to have had it. And they've been in the room... I'm pretty sure they've been in a room with President Rouhani, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran. All right. So. So there's a it's it was started out being intentional with a patent, but it's it's out of control. People are catching it. U.S. officials, are, they can't control it. Now, let's talk about let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk. Let's make sense of this. OK, because there, there there's sense to be had. Let me let me read some of these comments. I hate to ignore you guys. I'm just, I get on a roll and I have, to, I have to spit this information out. If this goes on, the election could be canceled. And you know, and, and that's a good point, Yashu, because if they're priming us for war, if they're, and if they're, in, if they're um, instituting um, martial law, you know, if we, if we call this a war, if that gains headway and, and legitimacy, like, you know, and it's not like they it's not like they can't can't create a situation and be like, "Oh, we're getting lots of um instances of terrorism or biochemical, you know, th- all they have to do is say China has infiltrated the states and they're infecting people. Some, something crazy that they nothing will stop them. Nothing will stop them if they, you know, if they want it. So, I mean, keep your eyes out. Right now, um, Americans don't want to see martial law. But we see the chess pieces are setting up, right? The, the, they're, regarding that objective, they're close. They can achieve it. The, the, the pieces are in place to carry something like that out. <clears throat> so, so one thing, when we think about who is in power, Right? Like we see the people who are who are in their business suits, their finely tailored suits, their trimmed hair, their finely manicured nails and their designer frames that make them look intelligent. Of course they have their college educations. All right. But <clears throat> if you think about it, long and hard and you really have to question some of these people's character. The type of mindset a person has to have in order to achieve a thing. See, we don't we don't see these people behind closed doors. We don't know who they are. Of course, man, let's take Bill Gates. Let's talk about Bill Gates. In 94, Bill Gates was a superhero to me. He created IBM computers and Windows 94. <laughs> I was like, man, Bill Gates is dope. Who, who in this room right now thinks Bill Gates is dope? Thinks Bill Gates is a hero? Now, who, who, who thinks, you know, pre- press like if you think Bill Gates is a psychopath? I think I think Bill Gates is a psychopath. And 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 I and and guess how many people support Bill Gates? <clears throat> There's a whole network of people who 
There's a whole network of people who support Bill Gates. There's a whole, like Bill Gates isn't the least bit villainized. But of course, everybody knows he's involved with all the illnesses that are circulating in Africa. We've heard him speak. We've heard him talk about how we should depopulate the world. Like, does that not seem psychopathic to you? And Bill Gates is just one, only one example. There are people surrounding Bill Gates that we don't see. There are men that never reach the camera that we don't see. They speak of genocide while sipping coffee. They speak, they speak like, they speak as if they're sitting on Mount Olympus, deciding the, li the lives of men. As if they're gods, deciding the fate of men who they have had no, no involvement with creating. They are trying to play God, and you don't hear them. So when we think of coronavirus, and we think of these rich people, and we think, we, well, who would create corona? Who would do that? Who would do? These people who believe in world depopulation? Maybe, just maybe. Now, how many, pe how many people believe in, believe in that? How many politicians believe in that? How many politicians have convinced people in our country that depopulation is, a, is, a, is something that should be done? How, how, many, how many robots have they made out of people? <clears throat> but when we talk about who to depopulate... We, we see it all sounds it's all, it all sounds like a term it all sounds like coffee table talk until we until we figure out who to depopulate let's talk about let's talk about who to depopulate then 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 our conversation here becomes a little strange doesn't it so when we talk about Pete why would why would somebody do that I don't think it has to do with um, it it really all kind of like you start to get answers when you when you when you think of who's who's talking about it, who introduced the idea. It's a mad it's a mad idea. It's it's crazy, and and they had a conference. They, what was there a conference in Brazil? Was it Agenda Twenty One? Was that was that the the, the twenty one points of like solving the world's problems and you know. Yeah, exactly, Yashu, the poor. The poor. Because the poor are voiceless. They don't have all you know, all the the voiceless impoverished people in the city and all the indigenous people uh of the country. You know, all the brown indigenous people everywhere that are in the way of corporate interests. Okay, so so why why would you know why would somebody release a, a coronavirus? The question, is there somebody psychotic enough? Is there some, is there an Elon Musk? Is there a Bill Gates? Is there a Jeff Bezos? Who's psychotic enough to put money into research and development into psychotic things like this? I'm not saying those individuals, I, I'm not saying as if those individuals had involvement in coronavirus. It, it really doesn't need to be them. It doesn't have to be them. It could be some, some other rich, rich person. But what the point is, there are people in this world that don't mind seeing a coronavirus <laughs> proliferate and ravage millions, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of lives across the earth. 
Didn't we um didn't we get word that there are sort of deep caverns with um living living situations? Deep caverns? I wonder I wonder what those what's going on with those right now. All those underground tunnels, you know, underground you know, underground cities, underground living establishments. What what's going on with those? Did we forget about those? What were what were those for? When we think about <clears throat> quarantine centers, when we think about all the videos of the fields with uh you know, the fenced off fields with the big buildings in the middle, we see some tanks. We see the videos of the tanks traveling, you know, on the railroad. Hmm. We see the we see the we see the tanks traveling on the freeway and on the railroad. What else do we see? We see <clears throat> the coffins. Right. What were those for? And then, and then we, and but, but then we, but then it starts to make sense when we see an article that says quarantine centers, FEMA has, you know, the government has approved, and you know, the Pentagon approved FEMA centers, you know, the quarantine, da da da, on air, this such and such Air Force base. They're always connected to military, right? They're always, you know, close to military, and the military is going to be involved. <clears throat> the military is. I heard I heard by a um by an army general's wife that it's all army. Everything is from the top army. Like so so the president is really it's a it's a figurehead, but there's a military regime in place. For those Israelites, for the Israelites in this room, we we know good and well. We know good and well that like that makes perfect sense. There's an army there's an army regime in, in rule. When you when you see the instability in Latin America, like in, in the nineties, when you see Venezuela right now, you see you see um Nicolas Maduro and he's got an army. Like his his army undergirds his his presence. <clears throat> and for Israelites, we know we know what what families are undergirded by by the army you know everybody's heard the name Esau and Edom <clears throat> right so we know um so <clears throat> when we're talking about <clears throat> now we're going to speed up the conversation a little bit um we're talking about the 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 where we're at right now where we're at, what what point? In, like as far as like the Bible goes, right? Nobody's gonna probably few people will disagree that we're living in Revelation's time. <clears throat> one might one could probably even make make the case that we are, if not just going into the tribulation, that we are well into the tribulation. All right. Now, how does that deal with Israel? How does that how does what well, how does that pertain to Israel? Um. We know that the timeline of captivity, see, the nations, nations are allowed to be in rule while Israel is being punished. And we know by prophecy that once Israel is finished being punished, Elohim is going to reap judgment on the nations. Okay? And this looks very much like judgment. It's ravaging Japheth. It's ravaging Edom. It's ravaging the Gentiles, and it's supposed to. Ezekiel 39, the whole book of Joel. What else? Genesis 9, 27. Jeremiah 1, 4, 5, and 6. We know, Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, we know who's where they're not supposed to be. I mean, they're supposed to be there because Elohim allowed them to be there because of us, right? Deuteronomy 32. <clears throat> but they're supposed to be evicted eventually. We know Genesis 9.27, Japheth will, will dwell in the tents of Shem. 
Baruch says, we'll remember ourselves, right? So <clears throat> we're seeing judgment upon the Gentile nations, okay? So when we think about Daniel, there's one more captivity left. And we know this last captivity started uh, around um, 63 BC when Rome conquered and occupied Israel. And we know that for those who believe in the New Testament and the ministry of Christ, we know that, we know that, uh, break it, break that down for, uh, I guess, uh, what verses, what verses in Genesis 30, uh, Benaiah? If you could, if you can copy and paste that, that'd be cool. Um, so that everybody is, you know, gets quick reference of it. <clears throat> um, but, but when we talk about, so the tribulation is, is according to second Ezra. Oh yeah. Deuteronomy 30, for sure. For sure. I know, what you, I know exactly what that is. De Deuteronomy 30 talks about Israel, uh, being dispersed and coming back from dispersion. Okay. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26. I think Leviticus 28 may have it too. Or maybe Leviticus 26. Um, <clears throat> we know that according to 2nd Esdras, the world is to, 15, chapter 15, the world is to be thrown into confusion. Um, Ezra 16 says, um, it says that Elohim will cause a bewilderment over the whole world. And a bewilderment, that could be like, well, a bewilderment is confusion. So he's going to throw the world into confusion. Tribulation. And in Ezra 15, it says, the, these, this tribulation will be a scourge of correction for humanity. All you Christians that are tuning in, <clears throat> I can, I, I, I know I, it is a lot of you Christians are at a disadvantage to these, to us Hebrews, because a lot of us were Christians and a lot of us were devout Christians who actually studied. <clears throat> I wouldn't say a lot, I don't know how many, I, but, but I know I was, I, I was, I was going hard in the paint. Um, um, and so in Christianity, you never really know what the tribulation is for. You know, until you start to read some of these books that were taken out, that were sort of denounced by the Catholic Church, you don't really know what it's all for. Like, why did the flood happen? Why did the, why did, um, you know, what happened before the flood? Why, why do we have to go through a tribulation? What's the tribulation for? Well, you know, <clears throat> some people don't, some people can't make sense of it, so they just don't think about it. Right, but but there's a reason, and Second Ezra says that the world is, it's a scourge. A scourge is, is a correction. It's a rebuke. And we know that, um, Jacob was rebuked first. The world was allowed to flourish. Iniquity, the time of the Gentiles, has abounded, and Elohim is going to free his people. And after his, you know, after the the correction of Jacob is finished, and he's going to correct the rest of the world. All the curses that came upon Jacob are going to come upon the Gentiles, and it's going to be worse. So when we're looking at coronavirus, and we're looking at how many like Caucasian people are being ravaged, how many Gentiles are being ravaged by it, are we seeing the tribulation? Was vocab wrong? Was vocab wrong for taking for for mentioning Dante Fortson and Teo and Sister E? Was he wrong? Like, is he going to be proved wrong by coronavirus? You know, it's like something is something to really pay attention to. Appreciate 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 you uh, pasting that. Ah, oh, yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Benaiah. Deuteronomy 37, 30, verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. Lamentations 4 is another. Uh, I think towards the end. Talks about um, rejoice, Edom. You know, 
he's punishing he's punishing us now but the punishments will come upon you <clears throat> right the pun the punishment of jacob is finished i, I can't quote I, I could i could pull out a bible it's right here really but you guys can you guys can post it if you want lamentations i think it's the last couple verses of lamentations <clears throat> and so um so when we're seeing this tribulation, this is for the Gentiles, right? And possibly two-thirds. I would say two-thirds are definitely in that. But his elect, by revelations, we know that his elect is sealed. We know that Joel, by Joel, he has an elect. We know by Isaiah, he has an elect. Isaiah, I want to say 49. And I'm 55. So <clears throat> we know that this, we know but that coronavirus is, is a plague. And it, it came out of the Gentile hands, right? So, but it's like, it kind of looks like it's still a plague on the whole world. It looks like judgment on the whole world. Well, when we think about Elohim, who was first cause, Elohim, Elohim causes, he, he allows all things to happen. And they, they, act, they happen by his ordination. Whether you want to believe that he gives a decree for the evil to happen, or whether he allows the genius of, one second. When he, when he, if, or if you want to believe that he allows the genius of his creation to devise the wickedness, you can believe that too. But one thing's for sure: he greenlights it. He green, he greenlights it. <clears throat> and so, um, and so, even every evil that happens, every leaf that falls off the tree, right? Right. He 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 nothing happens without his ordination. Right? So <clears throat> and, and a lot of people don't want to think they don't want to think that. They don't want to think that a calamitous situation or a mischief uh or something evil would come from God. Oh no, it's Satan. Oh well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Satan, you know, we see in Job in, in, in the heavens, they, they negotiated over Job's life. They nego Do you see a negotiation? He asks Satan where he's been. Satan tells him. And he says, have you considered my servant Job? Yes, but he's, ta he's taken care of. He's, he's only like that because you take care of him. Curse his life and, and afflict his life and surely he will curse you. And because Elohim thought it would, thought it was good, he said, "All right." May he thought the test of Job was good. He said, oh, "Okay, I want to see if Job is gonna, you know, is Job gonna curse me. I have blessed his life. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if okay, okay, Satan, go ahead and go ahead and curse Job. Go ahead." <clears throat> in for, in first, I think it was first or second Kings. I want to say it's first Kings. Man. I Either first or first or second Kings chapter twenty two, might be second. Um, Ahab, King Ahab, was allowed to be afflicted after the prophet Micaiah uh, prophesied to him. Um, what was the prophecy? What was the prophetic vision? I saw in heaven, you know, he saw Elohim by the throne, surrounded by spirits. And Elohim said, Elohim ordered a lying spirit to be sent to a cop so that he can die. And you can read that. You can read it. He said, <clears throat> he gave the situation and a spirit spoke up and said, I will, be a lying, I will be a lying spirit in the mouths of his prophets. And Elohim gave his blessing. He said, go and you'll succeed. Can you, can you imagine a council like that happening? You know, in in heaven, all the spirits surrounding the Almighty. 
And he says, I'm, I'm going to do a thing. And one of his spirits says, I will, I will go and be a spirit and inspire one of the military scientists to create a, a plague that will devastate the earth. He says, go ahead and do a thing. And then that spirit guides and, and the spirits who are subordinate to him guide and make that whole thing happen. This is how the world works, right? This is how the world moves on earth as it is in heaven. Talk about spiritual inspiration. Okay? That's one of the things, that's one of the themes I covered in Mal 1 on the Rumble Room channel. If y'all get a chance, go watch that after, after the live is done. Spiritual inspiration. What is inspiring vocab to go, vocab Malone to be to go as adamantly as he is against the Israelites? If we're so insignificant, then pay us no mind. But he has something, there is something inspiring him, inspiring him to do what he's motivating, animating him to do what he's doing with consistency and fervence and commitment. And and he may he may he may watch this. He may get wind of it. Somebody may give him, you know, you know, P was talking about, you know, P was talking about you. Pac was talking about you. There you go, Benaya. First Kings. <clears throat> appreciate you posting the verse for the for the viewers to see that. I appreciate that, brother. Um what is motivating him to do what he's doing? Is it not by a spirit? Right? Like we we make choices. We make choices. But I think the job, and I think the scriptures speak to this, based on our choices, Elohim judges, right? He he gives us moments of decision. And this is one of the one of the uh, I think uh, one of the things that people deal with when they talk about Calvinism versus Arminianism. You know, predestination and choice. <clears throat> um I believe that Elohim gives us moments where we can decide if we want to do good and want to do bad. I think he gives us I think he gives us moments where we're allowed to see the difference. I think and I think angels oversee that. Okay, let's give you a season to do bad. Okay, what and and and, and we don't, we never really think of it in terms of this, but through our lives we say, "You know what? I tried this." I was involved in drugs for a long time, and you know what? What I learned, it only delays your problems. I had I had a person say this to me. She was like, um, "This is this is back. This is maybe like ten years, about almost ten years ago." And she was like, "Yeah, I used to do like shrooms and stuff, and like this is back. <clears throat> this is a while back." She was like, "Yeah, I used to do like shrooms and stuff, and like, and they're pretty cool, but like." They really just kind of make you forget about things. And you're basically just like intoxicating yourself. You're poisoning yourself and you're just forgetting about things. Like that's basically all that's happening. So I stopped using shrooms. And like, and she, one of, I think one of the things that came out, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but like, this may be with another person, but like, I think another person. You know, because it made me think like she was doing shrooms. And so it's like, what was the purpose of doing shrooms? And I think one of the things that came out in our conversation was like, you really kind of just forget about things. But when you're done, when you're done with it all, you still have to deal with what you're dealing with in life. It, it really provides no advance. It's just like a, it's, um, you're just pausing your life. And when you come back to, you have to deal with what you were what you had to deal with before you decided to get high because of what you had to deal with, you know. And I and I and I and that theme has come up in different conversations with people who have, who have get involved in drinking and, and doing drugs and and of course I've experienced it myself. I haven't done any like I haven't done anything beyond smoking weed, but like it's basically the same thing. Like whether you smoke weed or drink wine, like you can get you can, you can you can get a feeling off those substances. But really, when you come back to it's like, what do you have to deal with? You have to deal with the same things that you had to deal with before you, before you went on that high. 
you know. So, so some people get high to forget all the time. And then what do you see? They neglect cultivating themselves. And in the end, years down the road, you see someone who's destroyed their lives. They miss out on things. They just they destroy themselves, their health, their relationships. <clears throat> and so, uh, but but that's all sort of, it's all sort of mitigated. It's all sort of, it's all sort of managed by the spirit world. And I don't think that Elohim allows it to happen equally to everybody. I think, I think that he has people that he favors. I truly, I truly believe that. Like he, he loves certain people. Like he didn't allow Solomon, he didn't allow Solomon to end up like Saul, right? King Solomon didn't end up like King Saul. And, and, and Elohim promised that to David. He said, uh, he said, I'm not going to, um, I'm not sure if the words were hate. He said, uh, but, but the idea was that he would continually show, show Solomon favor. And we know Solomon, he set in motion something that was terrible for Israel's future. Something that this, it was a seed of, of wickedness that took root in the whole line, in the whole house of David. <clears throat> Solomon, Solomon, by his actions, cursed the house of David. Right? Um, so, so spirits are constantly working to make things happen. <clears throat> and so when we talk about the scientists, when we talk about um, what they're doing, what they're allowed to carry out, Sure, it's madness. It's madness because they're inspired by spirits who are doing a thing in the world. So when we think, why would somebody want to create? Why would somebody want to create a coronavirus? Well, let's take a few steps back. Why on earth would somebody want to make a gun? Why would somebody want to make a gun? Wow. Why would somebody want to make a bow and arrow? Okay. Hunting. Okay. Okay. Hunting's, you know. Why would somebody make a fishing net? Oh, okay, you can catch animals, okay. <clears throat> Why would somebody want to use a gun in war? Right? Why would so, let's think why would somebody why would somebody want to conquer another people? Why do nations go to war with other nations? Right? We know that Elohim allows these wars to happen. We not, we allow he allows nations to conquer other nations. We know. <clears throat> All right? But when it comes to those people who do those things, They don't always fare out too well. And a lot of times they're very strange individuals. What person wants to rule the world? What person wants to, wants to become emperor? What type of person wants that? Ask yourselves. What type of person wants to rule over other people? What type of person wants that? What type of person wants to... Hoard gold. What type of person wants to hoard resources? What type of person? And then what type of person wants to take? Let's get real current with this. What type of person wants to, bar, to wants to uh, bar off and um, you know, how do I say this? What person wants to bar off waterways? They want to. They want to make. Rivers and lakes, private sources. What type of person does that? These are questions we have to... Indeed, Brother Vincent Robin, Robinson. The lust. Ambition. <clears throat> and what it is, is we're, it, it's, it's, a, it's a form of robbery and thievery. So when we think about people who are complicit with this, people in high levels of government... People who are involved in um, 
corporations and businesses. What type of person, what type of government allows the Dakota pipeline to run through an indigenous source of water? And will kill the people and injure the people on the way to getting that, uh, that, that end accomplished. Sicking dogs on people, hurting people, pepper spraying people. And then, and then I think the report, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but didn't the, the water well end up becoming poisoned anyway? It ended, they ended up having spillage and it, and it ruined the river. Let's talk about the Dakota Pipeline. What kind of individual extracts oil from a place thousands, hundreds and thousands, maybe thousands, a th- thousands of miles away and wants to connect a metal pipe for thousands of miles across the country? That a, a country that experiences natural disasters like earthquakes, blizzards, <laughs> what kind of individuals conceive those ideas? It does it not seem mad to you? Does it not seem psychotic? Or oh, we got we found a big well full full of oil. We're gonna we're gonna dig a long metal pipe all the way from Alaska to the Gulf of Texas. How does you know? How does that? How about that? What? It's gonna pump out. It's gonna pump. Gonna pump down thousands of, of, of gallons of gas per, you know, per hour. <laughs> ga- ga- gallons of oil per hour, and it might crack. It might crack somewhere. It might might. We'll keep an eye on it. You know, hopefully, it doesn't spill and ruin the earth, ruin groundwater. What type of person builds nuclear plants by waterways? <laughs> like when you start to. Think these things out. It starts to seem a little crazy. But we really don't think about this in a critical way, so we think it's normal. Oh, nuclear power. Oh, wow. Power cities. Oh. And we believe the the euphemistic language and the lies that they tell us. Oh, it's it's a cleaner source of power. Oh. Oh, well. I'm sure Chernobyl is, you know, would they agree now? Would Chernobyl agree? Would Fukushima agree? Would uh, what's the place down on um in La Jolla? It was a uh, San San um. Oh my gosh, San San Ofre San Ofre. Think they had a San Onofre. Somewhere down near San Diego, they had a nuclear spill, and it was. I don't think it was as bad as Fukushima, but it was pretty bad. <clears throat> but who thinks of those ideas? These things can hurt people, but they but they make billions and billions of dollars. So you have people that are willing to do psychotic things, you know, for selfish reasons. But it, but they're psychotic. So when we think about coronavirus, it, could it be any different? Could farm? I know pharmaceutical reps. Big Pharma is probably rubbing their hands like, yo, if we can figure out how to get paid, we can really, you know, if we can figure out how to salvage the economy, you know. But see, sometimes people, sometimes crazy people don't think that far, do they? The people who are used as puppets, they don't think that far. And then they're like, oh, no. How many times have you seen that in the movies? The villain had this this grand <clears throat> this grand plan uh, to 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 accomplish a thing, to accomplish an end, and then in the end, it came back to bite him. How, how many times have we seen that? Right, like sometimes these people don't think all the way through, and a lot of these people they aren't smart. They're just rich, and they want what they want when they want it. Now. How coronavirus connects to that, I, I'm, I can't be sure. Can't be sure. But is it out of the question is what I'm saying. There's, there's a story behind this coronavirus that, that the public doesn't know about. And it's not until 50 years later, 80 years later, that, oh, 
reports are starting to surface that, you know, so-and-so had contact with, you know, with this person. And what this means is that coronavirus happened because of it and it could have been prevented. And, you know, same thing that's happening with uh, the, with the, um, what you call it, 9-11 stuff. All of, you know, NSA got word. NSA was was put was was told put on alert, but they told somebody to leave it alone. Somebody told somebody to leave it alone. You know, somebody was silenced. These types of things happen, and 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 I think with this this crazy crisis, it's it 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 might not be any different. <clears throat> and what I'm asking is that people really. Look past what they're being presented on the TV, because it may not be what you think it is. And if you and if you and if that is your first and final um, source of information, you might be severely putting yourself at a disadvantage. Take a look around. Take the, see the signs. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Speaking of all the Hebrews, when we talk about <clears throat> when we talk about um, um, the captivities, this is the final captivity. So it looks like judgment. It looks it. All the Hebrews are are happy this coronavirus is doing what it's doing, because that means the end is near. And we've talked about instability. Instability is happening all over the earth. Now it looks like we rejoice, but at the at around the corner, we know that martial law and draconian measures are on their way because that's the only way to maintain this world system. And when we think about the world system and how it ties into end time prophecy, when we think about Daniel 7, the beast, right? We know the fourth beast coincides with the kingdom of iron and clay mentioned in Daniel 2, 31 through 45. And we know that this last kingdom is supposed to rule all people and it's supposed to mingle, be mingled amongst the people. So we know that when we look at this this world system, it's built and Rome is at the center. Rome is at the center of this world system. All our taxes, all that stuff, we pay, all these nations pay tribute to Europe and Europe pays tribute to Rome. Europe, like that, the Vatican, Rome is the spiritual center of Europe. <clears throat> So Rome is running the world. All the nations that that are under the Catholic Church historically are working toward its ends. When the Messiah, heads up all you Christians, that when the Messiah, um, when the Messiah died, right? If we're talking about New Testament narrative, the Messiah, he didn't bring down Rome. He didn't bring it on. And Christians will tell you, oh, well, he wasn't supposed to. It was a king. It was a spiritual kingdom he was supposed to set up. Well, what kind of spiritual kingdom is that? Like what spirit, like spiritual kingdom of what kind? That people would forget? That people wouldn't even, res- that the, even only, even Christians won't respect? That Christians are abandoning? That ain't no kingdom. That's, that's a, that's rhetoric. It's it's rhetoric. The Messiah was was prophesied to liberate Israel from their final captivity. <clears throat> and if you believe in the New Testament, you're it, that person's going to be Yahushua Hamashiach. It's going to be you know if you're coming out of the Christian faith, it's going to be Jesus Christ of the Bible. A lot of people have a problem with that name. I'm just saying it for people who. You know, just as a courtesy of of language for, you know, for those who don't find any problem with <clears throat> with the name Jesus Christ. But I'm talking about that person who we call Jesus Christ in the New Testament. But he didn't he didn't overthrow Rome. He came, he was crucified, he resurrected, and he ascended. He didn't. He, and and then when the when the disciples asked him if he was going to 
to hand over the kingdom, deliver them. He said, don't ask me about those things. And then he, and then shortly after he left. So, so even the Christian Jesus didn't do what he, what he was supposed to prophetically accomplish the first time he was on earth. But we know why, why the Christian church, by the Roman Christian church, wouldn't want that prophet. We, we know why they would give us the narrative, oh, it was a spiritual kingdom. We know why. Because when Israel is in captivity, they're in power. The nations have always known when Israel is, when Israel is punished, they're in power. Because Israel is supposed to be the head and not the tail. So when we become the head again, they become the tail. A little something for you Christians that are listening to think about. All right? Like, they've always known this. From the days of their exodus, Balaam, son of Beor, figured it out, the Edomite. And I think if you read in the book of Judith, the, uh, what was it, the Ammonite? The Ammonite knew that the nations knew that. <clears throat> so... So this coronavirus is, is a problem. We see locusts. We see the locusts ravaging Asia, the coast of Af the eastern border of Africa, coast of Africa, ravaging the central plains of Asia, Ukraine. All that, all the 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 lot that Jafet, all the lot of Jafet, right. Because Japheth is, he's calling Gog and Magog into judgment. And some of these camps will say, oh, Chinese are Moabites and Ammonites. No, they're, they're not. They're not. And if you look into history <clears throat> and you look into the lots, if you look into Jubilees chapter 9 and you know where the families were supposed to go, and you know where the families pl proliferate. You would know that the Chinese and the and the um, Japanese and the Russians, they're all under one family head. They're all related. They're all related. There's you can go into you can go into some por some portions of of Russia. I'm sorry, not Russia, but um, the countries who were like formerly part of the USSR, like Kyrgyzstan and, um, you know. And you can find people that actually look Chinese, but they speak with Russian accents. <clears throat> they're, they're family. Jafet is one family. Um, and so they're being called into judgment. And is it a, and is it a, I mean, I guess we have yet to see where a, that a, a, a melanated nation is severely impacted. And they don't seem, the news seems to be like silent on that issue. Well, what, what ethnic groups are being impacted? What? You know, is this the, is the, obviously this coronavirus is an ordination of the most high. He's letting this happen. And when we read in the books of prophecy, are we mistaken when, when we identify coronavirus as a plague? Are we mistaken when we ultimately attribute it to the hand of Elohim? Elohim said in, in Amos chapter 3, verse 6, he said, Would there be, Should there be evil in the city and the Lord not hath done it? If you, you know, talk to Michael Halloway, he'll have problems with that. <clears throat> so this seems to be, it seems like judgment. It seems like our redemption draweth nigh. And when this virus hits the U.S. like it does Wuhan, and it doesn't look like the U.S. is prepared or has any solutions as of now to sort of not make it look like Wuhan, they're saying that there's a virus, 
I'm sorry, they're saying that there's a vaccine, but the vaccine's really not going to be approved for use until a year to a year and a half. It took three months for Wuhan to get as bad as it did. We're now probably in what? It's coming to a month that, that you know, the U.S. has really kind of been hit. Hit by coronavirus. Why wouldn't, why couldn't U.S. look like coronavirus? Now, when we talk about martial law, we're talking about, now we spoke about instability earlier. The, the system is rocking, right? There's lots of pressure traveling to different places very fast. The people, there's unrest in the people. The government is trying to tell the people to calm down, calm down, but the, it's, this disease will, has manifested itself in ways where people can't deny what they see, and it's going to continue to get worse. Uh, I think Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo said, <laughs> after he said, guys, let's not panic, he, he reassured the people. Maybe it was the de Blasio. He said, the numbers will get worse. I think it was Cuomo. He said, after trying to tell the people that it's, 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 it's no, they shouldn't get any more uh, upset about it than they, than they do the flu, <laughs> which, which apparently there's a vaccine for at least, they can say that. They can't say the same for coronavirus. He said, <laughs> the numbers will continue to go up. So basically get used to, get used to it. Don't panic, but just know that lots of human beings are going to be adversely impacted with this illness, even to the point of death. You see the madness in that? You see the, you see the psychosis, the psychosis of that? Do you, do you hear it? You can't, you, it doesn't really make sense until you really start to, start to think it out and flesh this idea. About, but that, that's madness, But when you start to think about who's in office and, and you really start to look into who's really behind politics, it really comes down to murderers, mobs, Jewish mobs, Italian mobs, Irish mobs. They're paying money. You know, some big gangster will put his, you know, his nephew or his, his, his relative who's who's bright and soft-spoken, who doesn't, who's not into shooting guns or doing dirty work, you know, but he's a smart kid, bright kid, looks good, you know, looks handsome, good enough to put in front of the public eye. And, 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 and this guy's the nephew of some, some, some guy you never see because this guy is, is is the brain. He's the brains of the family. He's leading the family. But he's got he makes good decisions. So he puts his nephew who shows who shows bright prospect. And this guy's clean. And he keeps him clean. And if this and if his nephew ever comes comes into problems, there will be people you never see that will what that will fix this situation. And and that nephew who's put in front of the public eye, who does good in public speaking, and he becomes he becomes a politician or becomes you know some who's who in society, politics. He starts to see the craziness that happens, but he's smart enough to say, "Okay, I'm good. My family's fed." You know, he come he comes to the reality, so he his conscience is a little bit marred by because he knows that stuff is happening. He knows the blood that is being shed behind the scenes. This, this is what is happening. This is what happens. De Blasio, Cuomo, they're just faces. They're the faces of power, of hidden power. And you have to, you have to understand this. This is because, because if somebody if somebody gets Cuomo uncomfortable enough. Cuomo's going to make a call. And I'm not saying that's going to be a citizen. Maybe it's going to be a, a politician that's had enough and who's lost and who's not getting what he wants. And he's going to call out Cuomo and he's going to say things about Cuomo. And Cuomo's going to make some calls. Say, hey, this guy is giving me a hard time. And there's going to be a voice on the other end of the line. Don't worry about it. Well, don't worry about it. 
and in two, three weeks, the problem goes away. And that can look like a, that, that can look like a number of different things. But this is the type of peop, these are the type of people that you have in power. <clears throat> these are the type of people that you have in power. You never see the dirt that they do because that's, that's the game. That's the game of politics. They're supposed to look clean. They're supposed to look good. All right? So when you see de Blasio and you're like, oh, he doesn't seem like a crazy guy. When you see Cuomo, oh, he doesn't seem... You, you can listen to what they say and they're clearly lying to you. When you listen to Bill Gates, oh, he doesn't seem like a crazy guy, but he sure does talk like one. He sure does talk like he belongs in a padded cell. <clears throat> These guys are insane. Right? So, so these power structures, they, 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 they're, they're fulfilling a purpose and they're part of Elohim's purpose. <clears throat> and it goes back to Rome. And we know that when we see this instability, right? When we see this instability, it's clue that, that Israel's redemption is around the corner. Israel's redemption is around the corner. And perhaps the, all the draconian laws and measures and martial law, could that be a, a, a bruised system recoiling from the pain of its judgment, attempting to regain control? Could that be what we're seeing? Is the chip, is the RFID chip, is um, the restriction of travel, the total revamping and reinstitution of a currency system, the result of men trying to hold on to what is already broken? And could it be that it's just the last stage of a fallen empire? Let's talk about empires. And then I'll, I'll probably wrap it up. I've been on for a while. <clears throat> Let's talk about empires. I'm not going to get too deep because <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about what I remember and what I've, what I've drawn. Um, something about empires. Empire, when, in, when a person sets out to create an empire, okay? It's, first of all, it's, 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 it's psychotic, but we see their ambition. It's been romanticized to us, right? Oh, he's an emperor. Wow, the golden age of this empire, wow. But we know that in order to build an empire, it takes bloodshed, it takes thievery, <clears throat> right? Like, that's just part of the game. You conquer a people, you take away their life, and you make them do what you want them to do. You, you, you take control of, peop of people. Right? Um, and I'm talking about in the context, when we're talking about something that's not ordained. Well, everything's ordained by God. But when we're talking about, I mean, the Most High uses war for judgment. But when we're talking about men who war against the Most High, behind a lot of these empires, research them. What do we see? We see a pantheon of gods. We see pagan worship. Right? And Israel was to be the representative of the one true creator. And so by this service to the creator, we were to rule. And we were to give instruction, righteous instruction from Torah. But there are men who war against God. And by the, by the aid of spirits who ultimately carry out the Most High's plan, they got no other choice. <clears throat> Okay, they war against the creator and they they rule unjustly. And so these empires, 
they grow, and for a time they're allowed to rule, maybe because the Elohim, you know, sees them useful. But then what happens over time? Let's take a look at all the great empires that have fallen. There's one simple thing. They become way too cumbersome. By cumbersome, I mean they just become too big to manage. They become too big to manage. So if we're thinking about an emperor, his, his goal is to steer the nation where he sees fit. And you, what you can't do without the power of Elohim. But if you're, if you're, if you're ruling unjustly, unjustly and ev- in evil, if you're like, if you're doing things that are not, that are not, uh, that do not um, give credence to the most high, it's, it's bound to fail. It's bound to fail. Because in, in, at the heart of empires are greed. Greed, you, greed does itself in. It does itself in. So you, you acquire all this landmass and you call it what you want. And you get, people to, you get people to rule under you and rule it because you have to. You can't be everywhere at once. So you have generals, you have princes and rulers that rule regions. And each region has, its, has issues unique to its own. They live, they, you live in a different space, different climate, you, you know, different maybe economic um, situations. Some, some, some regions are close to rivers. Some regions aren't. Some, some larger regions are divided. And some, th- some of those sub-regions don't have the resources that other regions do. So they, they, com- they conflict. So there's all sorts of pressure and conflict that's happening in the empire. And the empire, to a certain degree, can, can mitigate those conflicts. Can come to agreements and, you know, s- solve, resolve those issues. But then there's deep, there's deep conflict that you can't get rid of. There's tribal grudges that, that happen for generations where they just don't like a neighboring people. And nothing you can do or say is going to solve that. And you can kill both sides and you can hammer them, you know, to death. And they still hold those grudges. And you can't stop it. It's something beyond you. And then, and then you have people who just don't like how the top rules. And they voice it. And that creates pressure. Like it's very difficult. It's very difficult to have a peaceful empire. And what happens is you, you have a people who, are sort of, who sort of deal with it over time. And then you have, uh, you have people who, who develop opinions and who want change. And then you get... You get Lots of um, political um, crises that occur. And then, you know, if you're as an emperor, you're not solving these crises, you're pe- the people directly beneath you. And it, and it goes like this every level. The people beneath you will start to question your competency to rule and they'll want to they'll want your spot. If they don't think you're good enough, they will they will want your spot. And if they and if they just if they just covet your the glory that you receive, they'll want your spot. So you have people that have an interest in seeing you gone at every level, including the emperor. Look at Rome. His closest people stabbed him in the back, literally. They murdered him. His own friends. <laughs> in the Roman Empire. Talking about Caesar. I think it was Julius Caesar. <clears throat> His own friends stabbed him in the back. And if we talk about if we talk about the Islamic Empire during the Middle Ages, all the caliphs would murder each other. There's betrayal. I can't go into too too much detail, but those that's one of the themes I remember. All the things that I remember my professor saying. There was lots of betrayal. Lots of insubordination, uprisings. So, 
<clears throat> you know, and I'm and I'm sure you can do a you know look up Napoleon, look up Hitler, look up um, Kush, look up you know Alexander, look up those empires and see how 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 long they last. Empires never last long. They never last that long. Every empire comes, it experiences the glory days, and it comes to an end. And why should we think that the U.S. is any different? Why? Because we can't imagine it. We can't imagine life without U.S. being the number one power. We can't, we can't imagine, you know. That's what's so surreal about this coronavirus. Because the truth is, Pence could be dead in a few months. Donald Trump could be dead in a few months from coronavirus. That's a possibility. Any person in power could be dead. There's lots of officials who are, there's plenty of officials out there who are infected. And how many more are going unnoticed who don't know they're infected, right? And all the information they can give you, they'll give you and say, oh, it's, uh, it's under control. No, it's, it's not. And Wuhan proves it. Ari Wrong News proves it. Al Jazeera keeps an eye on Iran. They're proving it's not under control. Italy is not under control. So all these draconian measures, all this martial law, they're, they're trying to hold on to it. They're trying to hold on to it. But this is the end. This is what happens when empires fall. It clenches its tightus. Before you fall, before you hit the ground, you're looking for places to go. You know, you're looking for places to regain balance. And the first thing you do, you reach for something to support yourself. It's before you hit the ground hard. If you have something in your hands, if you're juggling, Governments juggle people. They juggle economies. You're going to grip to those things tightly. So when a government like Italy or China, it shakes and it grab, the first thing it grabs onto its people so they don't go anywhere. Because if the people uprise, it's over. So they, in, they inflict harsher measures to stay, to stay in control of the people. Because if you don't have any people, you have no government. So is this the end? Is the U.S. going to hit the ground? Is the U.S. clutching the things in its possession so that it could regain balance? Will it regain balance? We know that prophecy says it won't. It's going to be destroyed. So we're just watching. So when you see these people try to lull you to sleep regarding coronavirus, and if you're a Bible believer, then take a closer look. That's all I'm asking. Take a, take a closer look. Because it may not be what they're saying that it is. I'm trying to think of any last points I was going to make before I uh, wrapped up. <clears throat> Hmm. I appreciate it, bro. Benaya. If there's any questions, feel free to shoot your questions in here. We can do like a Q&A or something. We could uh, chop it up. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Vince, your, your question earlier about the witnesses. You know, man, I'm not... I haven't received any understanding about that. I know... The Revelations does uh, address the two witnesses, but I, I can't really, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they, you know, some people say, some people say they're uh, Jesus and John the Baptist or Elijah and Elisha. There's different commentaries on it, but I'm not, I, I can't be sure. I, I can't be sure. But I'm keeping my eyes peeled. <clears throat> Let me see. Was there anything else? There was something else. There's always things that I m mean to like put out there. And then after I close, it's like, oh. Let 
me see. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I guess I'll just get on later or at another time. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, y'all, um, I hope this, this is a long live. I haven't done a live this long in a while. Um, but I thank, thank you guys for, uh, uh, hanging out. Uh, I hope what I've said was informative. I hope that some of this stuff you could sort of go back and listen to the commentary and I hope it's fruitful. Um, and I hope it's edifying. Um, so with that, I'll just wrap up. Um, and all the things that I forgot to say will come back. <laughs> but, but until next time, guys, peace, light, and shalom.